We welcome you back to High Heat. Time now for our front office focus brought to you by Cone Resnick. We're privileged to be joined now by Jerry Depoto, the executive VP and general manager of the Seattle Mariners. And Jerry, thanks for taking a few minutes to be with Mad Dog and I today. And you guys are right in the thick of things right there in your respective division. The trade deadline is coming up. How do you guys get better? Uh, there are lots of ways we can get better. You know, some of it's going to happen the way it's happened so far, which is just a young team that's that's maturing. And, you know, every month of the season to this point, we, we're, we've we just gotten a little bit better. And particularly in June and July, that's been notable. But we'll also look to the to the trade deadline as an opportunity to add, hopefully, uh, some starting pitching depth. We're, we're running a little threadbare in the rotation. And we could certainly use, you know, some uh, some – help in our lineup, particularly right-hand bats. We, we've seemed to face nothing but really good left-hand starters. <laughs> so that, that'll be a priority for us. <laughs> and Shamanaya last night, lots of strikeouts. Tricky spot, Jerry. You've had such a great year. Uh, you know, you're, this is sort of still in a situation down the road here, making sure Seattle is consistently good. And you're in the mix, but you're not like you're in first place. So it's a very – it's hard for a GM a person in your stature here to figure out what exactly to do because you're, you're in it, but you're not really – you know, there's no guarantee if you make a trade that you can win a pennant. So you have to handle it properly. Thoughts on navigating that line. Go ahead. You know, you're spot on, dog. We, we have very little interest in doing anything in, in what I would call, you know, the, the rental player market. We're – we're not interested in picking up players at the cost of future the, the future of the Mariners unless those players will be here for be, beyond the 2021 season. So, you know, players who are sustainable to the Mariners roster really interest us, especially at some positions of present need. And, you know, so far our discussions with other clubs have been focused on players who exist on our roster beyond 2021. And we'll, and we'll stay in that mode we don't really see uh, an avenue toward contention that includes just blowing it out for short-term benefit. Jerry, you talk to any front office executive and they'll tell you that the bullpen is what keeps them up at night. Your bullpen has had stretches of being really good and they've also had some stretches of being a liability for your club. How do you maneuver through that? You know, right now, I think by by Fangraph's war, our bullpen has been the best bullpen in baseball this year, which is shocking, you know, based on the fact that coming into the season, it was it was not deemed to be an area where we were going to, to excel. But Kendall Graveman and Paul Seawald and JT Chagua and Drew Steckenrider and Anthony Mishevitz, all of them have contributed so heavily to what's been a magical season in our bullpen. And you know, last night I stayed awake based on our performance, but as a general rule, you know, our, our bullpen has been lights out for so long. And, and what we've been able to accomplish in our position in the standings has almost been solely riding on the back of our bullpen. And they've been, they've been so, so good. That it's not really an area we think we need to go out and upgrade, but we also know just as unpredictable as it was for us to send to, to the top of the bullpen rankings, it's, you know, bullpens are fickle. I, I know that better than almost anybody. It, and, and it goes, it, it goes both ways. And just as easily as we got in this hot streak, we can slump. So having depth is really critical. Uh, how about the kid there you got from the match, Jerry? I mean, he's shown some signs, but then he's been in these prolonged slumps. That first one, what was he, over 39, sent him back, brought him back in. He's, he struggled a little bit. I know he's going to be very, very good. Uh, you put him in the deep end of the pool. Give me a little rundown on him for a sec. Go ahead. Yeah, we have thrown him in the deep end of the pool, and, you know, we sent him back to AAA. He did all the things that we asked him to do. He's a terrific young player. I mean, so talented and fills up every box from a scouting perspective. He's so prepared. He works hard. You know, and at the end of the day, like I said ab about the need for a right-handed bat, we have had a disproportionate number of, of quality left-hand pitchers that we faced mostly in Jared's time in the big leagues. I think it's close to 70% of his at-bats now have been against lefties. And you know, that's, a, that's not an easy way to break into the league, but we can't predict the schedule. And, and we think he can handle both-sided pitching. We just need to, to watch him grow. And, and anything good takes time. So we're just going to be patient and give him the opportunity because we think the talent is there and it's ready. 
Jerry, you have to maneuver so many things as an executive VP and general manager of a big league ball club, and there's so many different personalities to contend with and, and very different learning styles, I would imagine, among the 26 men on your on your roster. How do you guys kind of convey information or disseminate information to make sure everybody has what they need, but it's not an overload? You know, we try to make it as individual as we can. Right? We're, we're very detailed in the, the information we present. We have, we have a catcher meeting, a starting pitcher meeting, and a bullpen meeting each day. And each one of them is a little bit more volume. You know, the catcher is getting the most, the starting pitcher getting what he needs, and the reliever is getting a review of, of you know, the, the, the hot spots in the lineup and, and the do's and don'ts, if you will. And from a hitter's standpoint, we try to give them as much as we can without tipping the cart. You know, we want we want them to have an open, free mind when they walk into the box and not overthink. So it's a pretty sensitive balance. We try to do the best we can. We are a progressive group that tends to to use more information rather than less, but we try to make it individual to that player. The one who needs it, the one who wants it, asks for more, we provide it. The one who we sense needs less or asks for less, we, we go that way. We, we don't have a one-size-fits-all shoe. Uh, Logan Gilbert there, Jerry. Is this guy going to be uh, a number one starter? Uh, does he got that kind of ability? I know he's been great, and you've been basically winning all his starts. Uh, it sounds like he's got a chance to be a number one starter here for a long period of time. Give me a little rundown on him. Go ahead. You know, we thought that when we drafted him, you know, in, in Logan's year, a 2018 draft coming into his draft season, we viewed him as as one one. You know, we thought he was uh, coming out of the Cape in the summer of 2017 as good as anybody heading into that draft. You know, and we had interest in so many players in that first round, including Jared Kelnick. Uh, among them, Logan Gilbert got off to a slow start at Stetson, and we stuck with him. And and since he's been in our system, it's been remarkable how the quality of the the person, the quality of the focus, and the work ethic, the physical stuff has gotten better and better. He'll touch 99 with his fastball. He's got both a curveball and a slider that are bat missing pitches, and his changeup has really turned into what at times can be a devastating pitch. And it's really only evolved since he's been in the big leagues and been forced to use it. We always thought it was a good pitch. Now we're seeing it. He's a premium strike thrower with high end deception, and I, I think those are all the ingredients to pitch at the top of a rotation. Now he's he's smart and he's prepared. Another young guy in your organization that was really paying dividends, of course, is Kyle Lewis, is the AL Rookie of the Year last year. A big blow when you lose him to that torn meniscus. Earlier, you guys were hopeful he'd be back by the end of the season. Where is he at in his process? You know, he's about ready to start hitting off a tee and light baseball exercise. Uh, he's... I, He's had so many unfortunate, uh, I guess, instances with his knees, and it's it's no fault of his own, uh, but a terrific player. I, we can't wait to get him back. We suspect it will be sometime toward the end of next month, but right now we're, we're very tentative. We don't want to put a, a date or a timeline on him any more specific than that because it's not something he should rush back from. Uh, we're a better team when he's on the field, and, and we hope he's there sooner than later, but we don't want to rush that. We, we care more about the long term. Jerry, last thing for me, um, are you living day by day? Do you feel you're in a pennant race, or are you are just happy that you're playing excellent baseball, above 500, good learning experience? That's a tricky one for you. Which one is it? I think it was it was the we're playing good baseball, we're getting great experience, and then last night we got in a pennant race. <laughs> you know, when, when you're playing the teams directly in front of you and, and they're good teams and you see them frequently and there's more energy in the ballpark, that's what it's supposed to feel like when, when you do, you know, get into those situations. So, uh, you know, this next week for us, three more with Oakland, three with Houston are going to be pretty telling. And it's going to be this young team. You know, we are a very young group and it's going to be this young team's first real exposure to playing in, in a playoff type atmosphere or, or, you know, playing with teams that are in that mode. And, and we talked about it last night post game, you know, this is our time to really learn great lessons and, and hopefully excel to the point where we can stay involved over these next two months.